the clients installed the Stalin satellite network in his house. Now he wants to extend the network to three different locations. The first location, the second location, and the third location. The distance between the last location and his house is about 200 meters. Obviously, the wireless is not a good option since there are so many trees between these locations and the trees will block in the signal transmission and receiving. He plans to pull three fiber optic cables from his house to these three different locations. We would like to give him an advice to pull just one fiber optic cable from his house to this middle pond, then extend the network from the middle pond to these two different locations. Since in this direction there are less trees, it's more easy to pull the fiber optic cables. Now let's move to the demonstration board and see how we can use the fiber optic cable to extend the network from Starlink. Before we get into the detail, I want to tell you we do have the free online courses regarding the IP camera, POE switch, fiber optic cable, etc. I've put the link in the description below. It's completely free. Now let's see what we have. This is the Starlink Gen 2 satellite dish in the house. It's working with this router to provide the network coverage in the house. This router not only provides the data connection, but also the PoE. One thing I want to point out is the Starlink is using the passive PoE, it's not the standard PoE. If you try to use a PoE switch to power this dish, it's not going to work. Alright, the first thing we need to do is we need to find a way to split the data from this Starlink system but there's no Ethernet connection either from the router or the dish. So the first device we need is called the Ethernet adapter. This is the Starlink Ethernet adapter. You got the input port and the output port. The output port has the output pad tail and also the port for Ethernet. First, let's put this Ethernet adapter to the link so we can get the data from this RJ45 network port. Okay. Now I need to disconnect the cable from the router, connect it to the input port of this Ethernet adapter. Let me attach this adapter to the wall and put the output back to our router so we are not going to damage the link eventually we got one Ethernet port from this Ethernet adapter which we can expand the data to different locations now we need second device this is the fiber optical switch we got two Ethernet ports plus a SFP slots we are supposed to connect one of these Ethernet ports to the Ethernet port of this Ethernet adapter and connect the fiber optic cable to this SFP slot. We do have eight SFP slots, which means we can work with the eight different directions. But as you can see, the SFP slot is empty. We cannot connect the fiber optic cable to this empty slot directory. We need one more device called SFP transceiver. This is the SFP transceiver. The SFP transceiver will convert the optical signal to the electrical signal and vice versa. Let's install the SFP transceiver. We are going to install three SFP transceivers. You may be wondering why we need three SFP transceivers. We will figure it out just in a minute. All right. Now let's attach the fiber optical switch to the wall and use a short patch code to link the Ethernet adapter to one of the Ethernet port on this switch so we got the data in this switch inventory we also need to power up this switch right okay a little bit far let me put it here all right now the switch is ready, let's move to the fiber optic cable. 
We are going to use the factory pre-made fiber optic cable to connect the house at the remote locations. The connector is made in the factory with its pulling eyes, so the customer can pull this cable over the conduit's directory. Let's take a close look at the connector. This is the four strand pre-made fiber optic cable. It's a single mode with the LC connectors. We are pulling just one cable, but actually four strands from the house to the remote locations. So inventory each location will have the independent link back to this switch. All right, let's make the connection. We'll use three strands to connect these three SFP transceiver. and at least one strand no use. So in this setup, each of these location actually has the dedicated link back to the switch. Even one strand is failure, it's not going to affect the network connection from the other locations. All right, the setup is ready in the house. Let's move to the remote locations. I've added a conjunction box in the remote location. This conjunction box basically manages the five optic cable strands Let's open it up. This is the fiber optic cable coming from the house. There's four strands, and we have been used three strands to connect the network to three different locations. Let's take one location for example. This is one of the fiber optic strands. Uh, we are supposed to install the access point at the, this location to provide the Wi-Fi coverage. As, as you can see, there's no SFP slot or any port to work with the fiber optic strands. We do need another device called outdoor media converter. First, let me attach this SS point to the wall. This is the second device we need called outdoor media converter. There's input for DC input and there's one output port which will work with the access point and we do have the SFP slot it is empty we need to install the device called SFP transceiver which is the same as the one we are using in the house okay let's insert this SFP transceiver and connect this fiber optic cable to this SFP transceiver. Okay, let's put it on the wall. And I'm going to use this power to power this media converter. This outdoor power supply unit output the DC 40A volt. It not only power this media converter, it also provides the power to this access point. So the last thing we need is a short patch coat to lean this media converter to our outdoor access point. We are seeing the link is up. That's it. That's what we need to do for the one locations. You can repeat the whole process and to do the same setup or the another lo two locations. Let's review what we have done. We have added this Ethernet adapter to the Starlink setup so we can split incoming traffic from the Starlink network and connect this Ethernet adapter to our fiber optical switch to expand the network through the fiber optic cables. We did pull one cable but four strands from the house to the remote locations. In these locations, we also use a conjunction box to distribute the network to different locations. We have added this media converter before the access point so we can connect this access point to this media converter and work with the fiber optic cables. Then I think there's one thing I did to point out why we can use single fiber optic cable to establish the link between one location to the house. The reason is we are using the BIDI transceiver which will take different wavelengths to transmit and receive the data. One strand can carry connection to one location. So if you do have more locations, you can 
pull the new file of the cable and connect to this SFP slot. Of course, you also need to add the SFP transceivers to this embedded slot. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post a message in the comment section below.